it's a huge gray area, a huge gray area in eat because some person could be doing so, so much that their neat calories, you know, 1,500, 2,000 calories. Yeah, and could it's not as- it's not even just that that actual kind of movement. It's also just if you're a anxious person, you're fidgeting nonstop. Yeah, yeah. That, that equates to neat as well, yeah, right? Absolutely. And what tends to happen as well is when you do a reverse dieting process correctly and you focus on going through that progressive phase, is people just do fucking more. People just do more when, they're, when they start having more calories in a controlled fashion. You start bringing them in slowly and metabolic rate will 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 increase, but also NEAT will increase so they can deal with more calories. And they'll be like, when I was in a deficit, I was on 2,200 calories. Now I'm apparently in a surplus, but I'm on 4,000 calories. Why have I not gained weight? Mm-hmm. You've not gained weight because before you weren't doing as much because obviously you've gone through that metabolic consequence of going into a diet. But now, because you've got probably at an adaptive metabolic rate anyway, this can change from person to person. And usually it tends to be on previous dieting methods. So when people have done like really harsh dieting methods for years mm-hmm. on end, your metabolic adaptation and how you're going to respond to higher calories is going to be slower because your body's in almost like, hang on a minute, I've been through this shit numerous times <laughs> and very frequently and not that long ago. So that's where you need to probably be a bit more slower on that reverse dieting process and a bit more progressive phase. Whereas somebody who's a bit more, um, a bit more sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not adaptive, but responsive mm. to it is going to respond better to higher calories quicker. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that in their demeanor and what they're doing on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. You see it all the time. When I had clients that were competing on, um, even though his body fat levels were really low, he was still on you know, reasonably high calories, probably at 2.7. He was quite a tall guy. Uh, not stupidly heavy muscled, but he was on about 2.7. He's dying all the time. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. Hey, mate, you're on 2,700 calories. But because he's because all the signals are still getting sent to the, the brain saying you're really fucking lean though as well, mate. And you're still in a deficit, even though it's not a huge deficit, you're still in a deficit. But then as soon as he finished that dieting phase and competed and afterwards, we did a little progressive reverse dieting. Mate, his, we got him up to like four and a half thousand calories and he'd be like running in the gym, you know, playing squash in his breaks. <laughs> Whereas before he'd be fucking sat in the office, literally like that, you know, and this mm. is, that's the, that's the neat component. It plays such a huge role.
a really good basis point is if you can lose a percent of your body weight yeah. on a weekly basis, blokes are going to respond really well to that. Like women, it's going to be a bit more fluctuations going on. Don't get me wrong, blokes are going to have fluctuations, especially with different qualities of foods going in. However, they tend to be a bit more consistent with their weight losses. And if you can lose around 1% of your body weight per week, you're dieting to a, to a good level. And what that means is you're not going too strict with it. And also you're still getting good results. So say if you're a hundred kilo bloke, if you're losing a kilo a week, because that's 1% of your body weight, that's 2.2 pounds. Most people would be like, oh, that's not that much. You do that for 10 weeks. That's a lot. That's yeah, 10% that's a lot of your body weight. weight. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking body weight. And the stats out there show that people that lose any more than 10% of their body weight, like 90 plus percent of them put it all back on and more again. Yeah. So you're still losing a decent amount of weight doing that. Yeah, I was literally about to ask you what the, the ideal amount of weight is each week for somebody yeah, yeah you just kind of covered it so that's that's cool i would say between again it depends on how lean an individual is yeah so if they're leaner you actually should probably go down towards a 0.5 yeah. percent uh, of body weight per week mm -hmm. um and can actually be lower if they're super super lean um and you can go higher than one percent don't get me wrong like you're going to have weeks where they do lose more than one percent but on average over the 10 weeks like what i always say to people is like you know yes you lost two stone doing this method. Yes, you've only lost a stone doing my method, but there's a fucking damn sight guarantee or likelihood that you'll keep that weight off. Mm. And that's what you're here for, right? You're not here, just here to, to lose two stone, yeah. put two, two and a half back on. Yeah. You're here to lose it. And what's the rush? Like it's only 10 weeks. Like you've been eating shit for three years. Like you can't just go 10 weeks. I'm going to be back to my peak fitness. Like it's not going to happen. You've got to, you've got to buy into it long-term health. Like I said, main priority 